Dr. Bloomer, chili peppers are known for their ability to produce heat. Mm -hmm. We know when we eat them, we get hot. But sure. what do they have to do with diet and health and weight control? Chili peppers have within them um, ingredients known as capsaicinoids. Capsaicinoids. Cap capsaicinoids. These capsaicinoids. Uh, Is that which, the fruit of the chili pepper plant? Well, components, the active pungent component okay. within, you know. Hot stuff. The hot stuff within okay. these chili peppers. Um, these capsaicinoids are sometimes individuals refer to this as capsaicin, which is one component of the capsaicinoid. Okay. But these capsaicinoids actually are responsible for providing that heat that you feel mm -hmm. upon consumption. Okay. These capsaicinoids we know can be encapsulated and they're sold oftentimes as a dietary supplement. Mm -hmm. They have many different properties uh, in terms of the scientific okay. literature when you look at this. But um, the one that's been discussed most recently and we have an interest in because we're actually completing a study on this right now right. in our lab is related to energy expenditure, mm -hmm. the heat energy expenditure, uh, lipolysis or the mobilization of fat to be used as a fuel source. Mm -hmm. And then ideally we're doing simply an acute study and most of the other studies have simply been acute as well, short term one day treatment. But if these capsaicinoids do in fact stimulate an increase in energy expenditure, and they All do right. increase fat mobilization, which could be used as a fuel source, mm -hmm. then these capsaicinoids theoretically can allow for a weight loss or, and or weight maintenance over time. So oh, that okay. would really be the big question down the road is mm -hmm. if I consume these capsaicinoids on a regular basis, will that help me maintain or lose weight and or body fat over the course of time? There's been a couple of studies that have been done looking at that some with favorable uh, results, others that the results really haven't been different between placebo and treatment. Mm -hmm. There's been several studies that have shown that acute ingestion of capsaicinoids in a laboratory-based setting, mm -hmm. um, either as a capsule or as literally hot red chili peppers, okay. that acute ingestion can increase thermogenesis or energy expenditure, and it can also increase fat oxidation based on breath sample analysis. Admittedly, all of the studies haven't shown that, but okay. a good majority of the studies have shown that in addition to appetite suppression. So oh. when the capsaicinoids are taken with meals, mm -hmm. um, subsequent meals throughout the day, when it's ad lib intake, mm -hmm. eat as much as you'd like, individuals tend to eat less when they've been using the capsaicinoid versus the placebo. So I think that's interesting, the appetite so. suppressant effect. Yeah. Uh, with a dietary supplement. So you would have as much food as you wanted to eat at your disposal, but when you take these capsules, you will just automatically eat less? That, that's been, that's what that's they've been, been showing. That's been shown in some studies okay. that the ad-lib food intake you know, would be less. The most mm -hmm. striking uh, results that I've seen have been when they added the capsaicinoid or the red hot pepper with <sighs> caffeine. Relatively ah. high dosages over the course of four to five meals slash snacks uh -huh. throughout the day, and the food intake was drastically reduced. Wow. So that's that's really interesting. The question becomes because again these are acute studies. Mm -hmm. If a person consumes this on a regular basis, will they have any sort of um, desensitization over uh -huh. the course of time? In other words, will they need to take more of it to get the same effect as they did the first day? And those studies, to my knowledge, really haven't been done. So I think that would be interesting to investigate. But it does generate thermogenesis, so it heats your body up, your metabolism gets fired up, right? Right. I think even if the average person was at home and had a thermometer, and they went ahead and doused <laughs> something with Red Hot or something uh -huh. along those lines and consumed it, they'd probably find that their basal temperature would increase wow. um, just with the consumption on a dose-dependent basis. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, several of these studies showing effects have used dosages that are relatively high. So we need to know whether or not a person can consume those relatively high dosages mm -hmm. on a regular basis in order to continue to benefit okay. from, from use. All right, and it would also generate lipolysis, burning of, of fat calories? It, in, in some of the studies that's shown that, admittedly not all the studies have mm -hmm. shown that, but Traditionally, what they've done is they've simply collected gas samples, breath mm -hmm. gas samples from individuals, uh -huh. and you can look at what's known ah, okay. as the respiratory uh -huh. exchange ratio, mm -hmm. a respiratory quotient, and that gives us an indication of which fuels are being used, whether it be lipid oh, or right. carbohydrate. And based on those numbers and the mathematics involved there, 
That'll give you an idea of are you burning more fat as a fuel source versus carbohydrate, and what proportion of each are you using as a fuel source. We're going one step further in our study, doing all of that, but then we're also pulling blood samples from subjects mm -hmm. um, over the course of a four-hour period to look at blood levels of free fatty acids and glycerol, as well as the catecholamine hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine, because that really mechanistically is the reason why we think these things are actually happening. Catecholamines go up, they mm -hmm. stimulate this enzyme known as hormone-sensitive lipase, okay. which allows for the degradation or the breakdown of triglycerides that are stored to allow for the glycerol and the free fatty acids to now enter the circulation. So we're in the middle of the biochemical work at this point, and hopefully okay. those data will be available shortly. Hopefully. Mm -hmm probably very promising news for many people. I think it's really interesting. I think it's a class that is underutilized mm -hmm. um, in the dietary supplement world. Um, but again, the dosing needs to be appropriate. Okay. We can't assume that if a study using 135 milligrams of capsaicinoid um, showed an effect that if we use two or three milligrams, we're gonna get the same effect. That's not happening okay. in my mind. Thank you very much. Sure.